Hi everybody, and welcome back to The Littles News Briefing with me, Charlotte Pensabond, where we talk about the news of the day and try to understand it a little bit better. Today, we're going to be talking about what the guidelines are that we should be following right now and why they're in place. There are so many local and federal government officials who have been working really hard to come up with a set of rules that they suggest we follow so that the coronavirus doesn't spread. You might have heard the term 30 days to slow the spread. My dad, Vice President Mike Pence, has been talking about it a lot, and he talked about it in our first episode that you can also watch on my channel if you missed it. It's really important that we follow these guidelines so we can go back to school and hanging out with our friends and family as soon as possible. This coronavirus is also called a novel coronavirus, which is a little bit confusing maybe because you might have learned about novels in school. Novels are long books, right? Well, novel also means new. So this coronavirus is one that we haven't seen before. If you're a young, healthy kid and you get the coronavirus, you might not be affected that much. You might feel a little bit sick or have a cough, but you might not even know that you have it. So the reason that we're following these rules right now is not as much to protect ourselves necessarily, but to protect other people that the coronavirus can be really dangerous for. This coronavirus affects people more if they're over the age of 60, so our grandparents and older adults in our lives. It also affects people who have compromised immune systems. So what exactly does that mean? If someone has a compromised immune system, all it means is that their body isn't as good at fighting off diseases as other people's bodies. So if they get the coronavirus, it can be really bad. So we wanna prevent that from happening as much as possible. The White House Coronavirus Task Force has put out a list of basic guidelines, but your local government officials have probably put out similar restrictions that might differ a little bit. So it's important to go to your local government website and see what those restrictions are for your area. For most Americans, the restrictions include staying home as much as possible, which is why you might be home from school right now and your parents might also be home from work. The virus is spread through droplets. So if somebody coughs or sneezes who has the coronavirus, those droplets will land on things that we might touch and then we might touch our face or our nose and then we might get sick. When we are around people and out in public, it's important that we stay six feet away from them. The reason for that is because the droplets tend to not be able to make it past six feet. It's also really important that we remember to wash our hands as much as possible. I know it can be kind of hard to remember, but think about all the things that you touch during the day that you don't even realize you're touching. If those things have the coronavirus on them and you touch your face, it might make you sick. A lot of scientists also believe that there might be a lot of people that are asymptomatic. Asymptomatic means that they might have the coronavirus, but they don't show any of the symptoms for it. They don't cough or sneeze and they don't feel sick. They might not even have a fever. So if they went out into public and didn't know that, they could possibly infect other people who it would really be dangerous for them to get. When we wash our hands, we wanna be sure to do it for at least 20 seconds under hot water with soap. If you have hand sanitizer, that's also really good to use, but check with a parent and be sure that your hand sanitizer has over 60% alcohol in it because then it can kill the coronavirus germs. It's also important to remember to clean things that we touch a lot. So maybe doorknobs, maybe tables or chairs, things that we're all coming into contact with a lot can have a lot of germs on them. So we wanna be sure that we're cleaning those surfaces. When you follow these guidelines, you're not just protecting yourself from getting sick, you're actually protecting other people, which is a really brave thing to do. Being selfless means that you're not thinking about how things only affect you and acting on that. 
you're thinking about how you affect other people. So when you're selfless and you stay home or you stay away from groups of large people, that is a way to help stop the spread of the virus and make sure that those people don't get sick. And now I'm going to answer some questions that I got earlier this week from kids all over America just like you. Hi, my name is Elle Marie and I have a question. Why can't we only have 10 people for a room? The more people that were around, the more likelihood it is that somebody might be sick and not know it, and they might spread the virus to somebody else. So right now, when we're gathering in groups of people, we want to stay under that number 10. Hi, my name is Karin P. Shanker. I'm nine years old and I live in Columbus, Ohio. My first question is, can the virus affect any other part of the body besides your lungs? Hi Karin, thanks so much for your question. Yes, the virus can affect other parts of your body, just like maybe the flu does, but it's definitely the most dangerous for people that have lungs that are a little bit weaker than other people's because COVID-19 is mostly affecting the respiratory system. Hello, my name is Sanjun Shanker. I am from Dublin, Ohio, and I am in eighth grade. My question is, if there is a second seasonal outbreak later during the year, what measures can we take to better prepare ourselves? Hi Sanjan, thanks so much for your question. It's a really good one. Right now, we wanna be sure that we're staying healthy and that we're not spreading the virus so that our healthcare system doesn't get overwhelmed. If we do see this come back again in another season, we'll be better prepared for it because of the steps that we're taking right now. I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Littles News Briefing. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to make sure that you get all of the updates on upcoming episodes, and we'll see you back here soon. Make sure also to get a parent's help and send in questions that you have. You can ask someone to videotape you and you can email it to littlesnewsbriefing at gmail.com.